In part one, I showed you how to set up a simple Turi application and send data from the front end to the back end, as well as look at uh, how to manage application state. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use Turi's event system to get data from the back end to the front end. But before we do that, I'd like to just go over the invoke function again, because in the previous video, what I showed you was how to send simple arguments to the ROS backend. But what I didn't show you was how to send an object. So before we move on to the events, let's just uh, quickly have a look at how to send objects and arrays. So if you recall from the last video, we created a login function that accepts two arguments, a username and a password. And so what we can do here is we can change the setup. So rather than sending two arguments, we can send a single argument with an object. So let's remove this code and say user is equal to login. And we'll create this login object over here. So say let login and just uh, put the login details here. Put my name Saeed and password one, two, three. Okay. And now in the ROS code, we can remove these two arguments because now we're sending over an object. So the object, the argument that we're providing is user and we will map that to type user. And we've already created this user um, struct in the previous video. All I've done is remove the ID field. But finally, what we need to do is we need to just add thirty deserialize so that it can be deserialized correctly. And we'll also add debug so that we can uh, test it by printing it to the terminal. Okay, so let me go ahead and print it. And let's run this. Okay, so let me click on the login and you should see the struct appear in the terminal. So there you have it, username and password. But we're not limited to only um, mapping to a a struct, we can also use a hash map. So let's have a quick look at that as well. So let's change the user, the type here to a hash map. So STD collections, hash map, and it is of string, string. Right, let's uh, recompile it again. Okay, and let's test this. and there's the hash map print, printed to the terminal. But what about arrays? Let's have a look at how we can do arrays. So let's put it back, let's put the code back to user and go back to the front end and create an array of, uh, of this uh, user. So I'll just copy this and say, let users, nope, users is an array. Okay, and uh, paste in another user object. Just format this very quickly. Okay. And this will be Ted, and we'll keep the password the same, and uh, we'll provide the array here. So it's users, and change this to users as well. Okay, and if we go back to the Rust code, we can now change user to a vector of user. So vec user, and this is users. Okay, let's run it one more time. So let me click on the login button again. And here you can see in the terminal, we are printing an array of uh, users. So that's how uh, you can send uh, objects and arrays from the front end to the back end. You just have to map it to a type or you can map it, map it to a standard um, Rust type as well. Let's now take a look at um, Turi's event system and how we can uh, use that to put together a simple text editor. To demonstrate how events work in Turi, we'll put together a simple text editor that opens and saves a file. 
And so what I've done is I've cleared the previous code and I set up some new code so that the UI now looks like this. So let me run the code for you. So here you can see that we've set up two buttons, an open file and a save file with a text um, area. So what we want to do is we want to type some uh, um, text here. So we'll say hello world. And we want to save that into a text file. And then when we reload the application, we'd like to be able to open that file and uh, present that uh, text in the text area. So if you take a look at the JavaScript code, you should be familiar with this code. I've set up two um, buttons with two functions, an open dialog and a save dialog. And the save dialog simply takes the contents from the text area and uh, um, sends it to the back end. So we need to create two functions in the back end, an open file and a save file. So we'll start with the save file first and then work our way to the open dialog. So let's create the save file function first. So go back to our Rust code and let's set up uh, the uh, function as a to command. And the function that we need is save file. And that takes a single argument, which is the contents as a string. And let's put the save file function in the handler as well. And now when we save the file, what we'd like to do is specify a location um, on uh, where we want to save the file. So to do that, we'll use one of Turi's plugin. And that plugin is the dialog plugin, but we need to add it to our cargo. So let's go back to the terminal and add a new plugin. So let me clear this. And the plugin that we want to add is um, Turi plugin dialog. So it's a cargo add Turi plugin dialog. So this plugin will uh, allow us to use a dialog extension in our code. So if we go back to our Rust code, we can bring in the dialog extension. So you say we use to re plugin dialog and then dialog extension. And that dialog extension is going to be available um, in the app handle. So let's bring in the app handle as well. So to re app handle. And then we just add the app handle to our save um, file function. So app is uh, app handle. Now, if you take a look at the methods for the app, we can see that we have a, a dialogue method here, which wasn't previously available to us. And on this dialogue method, we can uh, select different types of methods that we want to use. So we can say file. And what do we want to do with the file? Well, we can open the file in two ways either in a blocking way or in an asynchronous way. Let's go with the blocking file first and see what that does. So let me run the code and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to click on the save file button and what we're expecting to see is a dialog appear, but instead we get this um, error. So if I scroll to the top, let's take a look at what the error says. So here the error is state called before manage for given type. Now that's not very clear, but what it, what it essentially means is that we need to um, activate the plugin. So if we go back to our Rust code, just before we call invoke, we can activate um, the dialog plugin. Okay, so you can see that we've added the plugin and we've initialized it. And now if we go back to our code, and run it again, it should work. And now I'll click on the button again. This time we don't get an error, but uh, we don't get a dialog uh, box either. And that's because the, the window is no longer responding. The reason for that is because we're using the blocking method. And because it's blocking, it's essentially tying up the, the UI. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a way on how to show the dialog without blocking. So there's two ways to do that. We can use the non-blocking method or we can use a thread. I'm going to go ahead and use a thread. TD thread. We'll spawn a new thread and move this dialog code 
into the thread. We also have to use the move keyword here because we need to move the app handle into the thread. Okay, and let's give it another go. Okay, now click on the, the save file button again. And this time we get our dialog box appear and the main UI window is no longer blocked. Okay, so when we save a file, we'd like to be able to return some sort of value back to the front end. And normally what we would do is when we call a Rust function, we'd ha have the Rust function return um, some sort of value. So we could either, it could be either be a string or a, a Boolean. Let's assume for a moment that we wanted to send a string back, something that said uh, something like uh, file opened. But in this case, we can't actually do that because we're using a thread. And because the thread can uh, essentially complete um, in the future, we won't be able to just simply return something. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way on how to return a value back to the front end from within the thread. So somewhere over here. And so we can't do this anymore. And this is where we would um, use two res events. So what we can do is we can uh, trigger an event that sends a message back to the front end. And in the front end, we can listen for that event. So let me show you an example. So on app, we have an emit method. And the emit method takes the name of an event save um, state. And we'll give it a value here. For now, we'll just say saved. And just uh, unwrap that. And now in our front end, we can listen for this uh, event. So we go back to the front end. And we can listen for that event here in the front end. So we can use a, a Turi's um, listen function from the event um, um, API. So I'm going to just copy this because this code is for to invoke, to bring in the invoke function. And what we want to do is bring in the listen function. And that's from the event object. I'll change it here as well. And I'm just going to set up a simple init function to initialize. And now we can call the listen. So which event are we listening for? We're listening for the save um, state event. And that will take an argument of the payload that we're receiving from the event. So we can say data. And let's just console.log the data to see what we get back. And now we just need to call init. Okay, so let's give this a go. And let's click on the save file button again. Okay, so I've realized that um, instead of calling the save file dialog, I've, I've called the open file dialog, but that's okay, we can change that in the code again. But for now, let's just click on any file and click open. And what we want to do is we want to go to the uh, console. And if we look here in the object, you can see that the object has uh, emitted a save state event and the payload is saved. So that's how you'd um, send data from Rust to the front end in situations where you would be either using, you'd be in the context of a thread or some sort of callback function where you're not able to return the data immediately. So now let's go and change that uh, blocking function to a file save blocking function. So we want to go back to Rust and the method that we want is blocking save file. And 
we want to capture the result. So we say file path. A file path should be an option. So we can handle that option or we can just unwrap it. Let's just unwrap it for now. I'm going to convert this file type into a string. So we'll say let file file path to string and we can use the file path to save the contents of the file std file system and write and that would be file and the contents and again unwrap that so just to summarize the blocking file method will return a file path and we can convert that file path into a string which will give us the uh, the file path that where we want to save to and then we just use um, the write function to um, to write the uh, contents to file so let's recompile the app and type something into the text box so hello world click on the save right so let's say hello.txt and then save and let's look at our project and there you have it hello.txt with hello world okay and we can do the same thing for the open file function so I'm going to copy this code and um, change it to open file an open file doesn't take any arguments from the front end so we'll delete contents and we need to change blocking save file to blocking pick file which also gives us a file path so we convert it to a string and then finally we need to read from the file so read to string and read to string just takes a file path and returns the content and then finally put the open file function into the handler so we're just about ready now we just have to make some changes to the front end so if we go back to the front end I'm going to change this to instead of save state we'll change it to contents because that's the event that's being emitted and rather than console logging we'll put the data straight into the text field so that's document query select uh, contents dot value and now let's run it again okay let's click on open file again select hello.txt and there you have it so this was a very simple example on how to create a basic text editor in the next video I'm going to show you how I created a Rust editor that compiles Rust code using the same technique that we used in this video so guys um, if you like this video please do consider giving it a thumbs up or a like and um, hopefully I'll see you on the next video.